one of the problems through this whole process was going to be uh, making sure we get the planning permits and then the building permit and also keeping every aspect of the design um, close to or within budget. Um, as far as things go, we've got the, perm the planning permit that went through. Um, uh, we resolved a few issues with that, making sure that the neighbours were happy and so on. And then um, I guess the next step to it was, was getting the building permit um, and getting a set of documented drawings and making sure it's sort of within budget. That's where we struggled a little bit. The, the budget was set initially. Um, when we came back with the initial plans um, and reviewed the costs, it was well over but, uh, original budget. So as far as the architect goes, we basically, or the architect, got the, the plans to a position that we could get a building permit, which was his contractual obligation. And then we parted ways. I've then taken it on as an owner builder. Initially, it was going to be prefabricated built by uh, by the architect as well, or his um, side of the company. Um, by me taking that on, it, uh, it's reduced cost, and then also I have a little bit more control over simplifying the build. Um, and I guess trying to um, do it in a more efficient way, that way we could actually get this project off the ground and built. Um, otherwise, it'd end up being in a plan draw somewhere as a conceptual project that never came to fruition. Moving forward from getting the building permits and moving past that sort of milestone, uh, a fantastic opportunity sort of arisen where, arisen, um, where Grand Designs has taken interest in the project and they'd like to follow the project. Um, what's been great about that and, and exciting about it is it adding to the ethos of the project and sharing the information. So by, by Grand Designs coming on board and following the story, um, people will better follow, the, follow that aspect of it. Also, it takes it to a national audience um, and eventually an international audience. But um, it, it, I think it's really important to help promote what we're doing and show what we're doing to a broader audience than what we could have hoped to achieve uh, through our website and so on. And if anything, it's steering people towards that website. They can watch the Grand Design episode and see the story of the build, and they can go to the website and see the technical aspects, the case study, the, the um, I guess, the mechanics of the build. Um, so it's a very good symbiotic sort of relationship there. The first step, I guess, and the exciting part has been um, getting the shed uh, demolished. And it was a very hands-on thing for me as well. I was involved with that. And, you know, as part of being there in a builder, I'm, I'm very hands-on with everything now. Uh, but that was the first step on site. Uh, so it was very exciting to have that documented again, Grand Designs was there filming it. Um, we've shot time lapse off it and so on, so you can actually follow the demolition part of it. It was very exciting to, um, to clear that site and get it ready now, and the process is now starting to get it ready for um, the, the incumbent building. Now that we've demolished the shed is site preparation, which the demolition was part of that, but the next stage is going to be running services to the site, getting the trenching uh, for the services that we're going to be putting on site, um, preparing the site with the geothermal, all those sort of things before we actually lay the slab down. Um, and even the excavation is going to be the next steps. Um, the services we're running to site are just going to be power and water and communications. So there's no gas on site, there's no fossil fuels uh, uh, being run to the site and all the electricity we're using is renewable power and then we're also going to be generating power on site through solar. Um, so the heating is going to be using electric as well as uh, geothermal heating um, and that's going to be quite interesting as well because they're going to be drilling down about 65 metres. There's going to be two boreholes that are approximately about 100, 125 mil in diameter and then they'll put water loops in that. The earth below three metres is approximately 16 degrees all year round. So colder water gets pumped in in winter, 
which then will be raised up to approximately around 16 degrees. And in summer, hot water will be pumped in and it'll be cooled down to approximately 16 degrees. That then will run through a heat pump system, which will uh, utilize the differential in temperature and then boost that and produce uh, hotter water, which then gets used for heating and cooling for the hot tub that's gonna go on the roof um, and also domestic hot water boost. So in parallel to all the site works being uh, done and prepared for on site, uh, I've got to find a prefabrication um, organisation to, to help me with the build. Um, so I've been interviewing a few prefab um, companies uh, that can do the wall and floor cassettes and panels. Uh, it's been a situation that we've had to simplify that portion of the build uh, to try and keep the costs down and also um, try and stay through true to the design ethos that was sort of set out. It's just basically gonna to be too expensive to go back and redesign from scratch. The engineering has been completed, the building permits have been issued. Uh, so we've really sort of um, tied in a little bit with what's there. So it's about stemming the hemorrhage, I guess, at this point. Um, we're getting closer to making that decision at the moment. Um, and that's what's gonna be sort of done in the next few weeks. Um, and then we'll move forward with actually getting the walls and floors manufactured off-site while all the um, site preparations being done, the slabs then being poured and laid, uh, the geothermals has to be installed as part of that. Um, so things are happening in parallel and that's where we can pick up a bit of time. So I'm still sort of predicting at the moment it's going to take about six months. I'm pushing to get it done by December. Uh, I don't think we will, but we've got to push as much as we can and try and get as much done before December, uh, before Christmas, because we'll lose a couple of months leading into Christmas and then uh, and then in January as well. So I, I'm going to push as much as I can to try and get as much done before then.